Exactly. Uh, we have a question. Are yeah, you ready, so, Neil? Uh, just to remind people, we're in the Cosmic Queries yeah. part. Uh, I'd like to think of it as Star Talk after hours. I know. Okay, go on. What do you got? All right, this is from a Dr. K. My daughter is planning to take me to Iceland to see the Aurora Borealis for my birthday. Which season is best to view the northern lights? The, which season is best to view the northern lights there in terms of peak activity? Ooh, okay. Uh, what kind of doctor is Dr. K? Dr. K doesn't say, but I'm just going to guess he is a gynecologist. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> or he could also be a doctor of math, because really any accomplishment at that scale, <laughs> you asked. So those are the two possibilities. Okay. And, forth. and then also, uh, is it better to go during a full or dark moon? In short, is there a scientific way to maximize our odds of viewing? And if so, how could we do that? Okay, so it's getting deep in on it. It's not just yeah. when can I go on a vacation. It's give me the like, yeah. the, the solar and he doesn't even physics. Mention Icelandic ponies. <laughs> so okay. yeah, but when's the best time to view the aurora borealis? Right, so a couple of factors here. First, Iceland is pretty far north. Yeah, and the farther north you go, mm -hmm. or equivalently, the farther south you go below the equator, the closer you get to the poles, the longer is your twilight. Mm -hmm. And the longer are the days and the longer are the nights, depending on what season yeah. you're in. You don't want to go to Iceland in the summer where the sun is up for 18 hours a day. And the rest of the days you're living in twilight. Because you want it to be as dark as possible to see the aurora. The aurora are not bright enough. They're going on all the time. They're not bright enough for you to see in broad daylight. You have mm -hmm. to wait for the nighttime. You don't want to be there during a full moon. The full moon is the astronomer's worst nightmare because at night you go from seeing 3,000 stars, whereas a night where there's no moon, where it's a full moon, that drops to 300. Mm -hmm. So it drops light by pollution. Factor, it's essentially light pollution when you have a full moon. So you don't want to go in the summer, so go in the dead of winter. You don't want to go during full moon, so look it up in the tables. Find out when there's last quarter to new moon back to first quarter. So you want to go basically at the smallest sliver or no moon? Smallest sliver or no moon, and when Iceland has the longest nights. In winter. That would be the winter, and you have 18 hours of night. It's the inverse of what goes right, on right. in the summer. So it's depressing but beautiful. And so the, so the argument for when to go to Iceland has nothing to do with the sun. It has to do with maximizing the darkness of your skies. Right. So now, you, what you want to do is wait for solar max. All right, every 11 years, the sun kicks in and becomes more active. There are more sunspots, there are more solar flares, there are more solar storms. And these things belch up uh, charged particles from the sun's surface. It, sp it scatters into the, the space of the solar system. It reaches Earth. It sees our magnetic field. Our magnetic field guides these particles in towards the poles. They collide with our atmosphere, mm -hmm. render our molecules aglow. Ah. And therein is the aurora so borealis and aurora australis, the, the aurora in the south. So you want to wait until the sun is peaking, then go in the Icelandic winter without a moon and you're good to go. So this, so one answer is go in around December, January, and the other is every 11 years yes, go exactly. in December or January. <laughs> Say this person, this Dr. K, doesn't want to wait 11 years. You're saying go in the winter. Uh, it, you, you, exactly. would, you would still see it. It would still be pretty. It just wouldn't be the maximum. Well, it, it's best when you have good old good good activity on the sun, yes. But otherwise, um, I mean, there's a whole Do you know when the industry. next year, do you know when the next time this Right now years? we're approaching solar maximum. So meaning this... It, it, so it peaks next year. Next year meaning yeah. 2013. Tw uh, it peaks in 2013, yes. 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 So, so that's a great answer. So now you just have to wait one year. Okay, that's a pretty reasonable... Okay. <laughs> that's much better than the wait 11 years and hopefully it's you're not... Oh, you just missed it. Right. Yeah. By the way, the sun is always active and there's always this solar sure. wind. And so... But you want you want the, the aurora to be kicking. Yeah, yeah. And so oh, that's yeah. how you do it. In 2012, it would be terrible to see, but 2013... No, no. <laughs> it's it's a slow ascent up to up to peak. 